Good afternoon. In this video, we are going to go in the Z direction with our palletization. In the previous video, we set this up with the column and row. So now we're going to go in the height direction. So we're going to take our pick and place X and Y program that we created before. Let's just go in there to see what it looks like. And we're going to copy this to say X, Y, and Z. So let's go back to the select and let's go to over and copy and let's go to options keyboard keyboard and let's go underscore z at the end yes i want to copy and let's go into this and the next thing we need to do is set up the palette so that we can have another point going up so let's double click the palette and let's go to box one and let's see the location for this somewhere right down this location so that we can do it again because we're going to be deleting this set so we're going to go delete and we're going to hit OK. So we deleted all of them except the first one. Uh, technically, I didn't need to write that down, but just in case I wanted to have that. So we're going to add and we're going to go in the X direction. We're going to have a total of three in the Y direction. We're going to have a total of two and that has not changed. And in the Z direction, let's have just two. And now we have to do our offsets. So our offsets for the X direction is going to be 300. For the Y direction is going to be 450. And then Z direction is going to be 200. And when we hit OK, now we have a stacking of our blocks. Now because our first one, before we copied this, we had our visibility at runtime was off, all the rest of them have visibility at runtime off as well after we copied it. So we don't have to go through and select each one of these and go visible at runtime. So you may want to make this front one not as visible so that we can see our placement for our first object. So that's going to be row, there we go, and then we uncheck visible at teach time. And now I can see my first placement of our object. So let's go into our drop off program to make sure that everything is good. So let's go into robot controllers under programs and here is drop off two. We're going to right click and we're going to go teach program. And then right here we're going to go wood and then we're going to go wood asterisk. And notice how it updated our wood palette with our box, but we want to make sure that we're going to do the wood box one asterisk and everything else is good so we close that out so that is now set we're going to go select we're going to go to program placement xyz and now we need to set up another position register of xy offset so i'm going to go up here and i'm going to insert another line and then we're going to set up the same position register ij number four and we're going to set up the Z coordinate this time and we're going to make it zero. All right, so let's talk about how this for loop actually works. So inside here, we have a four, one to two, and this has to do with the columns. So the columns is going to be from left to right. So here's the first for loop. So from four, the first number is going to be one. And then as soon as it loops again, so as soon as it hits the N4, it will go back and it switches to two. So there's going to be two columns. So once we go into the for loop, we instantaneously go into another for loop. And this for loop is going to be for the rows from row one to row three. So it's going to count one, two, three. So the first time it goes into this, we go into column number one, for loop number one. And here is for number one, so box number one places it, moves our X component, our offset, then it goes to two, places it, moves our X component, and then it play goes to three, places it, moves the X component, and then now we went from four, one through three. Now that we're done with that, we end the four, we reset the X back to zero, we move our column one to the right, which is our Y component, and then we go N4, so we go back up here. We used one, now we're going to go to two, and we start over again. So we go into here, for loop one through three, 
So we place and move an X, place and move an X, place and move an X, and now we move out of this second for loop, and back here we reset the X, move in Y, but we don't need to because we are done with this for loop. So we're go one and two, that's ends, so it jumps out of this for loop. So now in order to do a palletization going up in the Z, we need one more for loop. And that for loop is going to be for the Z coordinate. So we're going to put it on the outside of this for loop. So let's go down into our loops. And you'll notice here's our for loop for the column, for loop for the row. Now these are working off a register. So we're going to have to make another register for the Z coordinate. So we're going to call this height count. So let's go up to here. Let's add another line. And let's go new instruction, register equal to, and we're going to use register or data register number five, which we don't know yet. And we'll set that up in a minute. Constant equal to zero. So let's go under data and register number five. I'm going to call this my Z offset. And we're going to set this to zero, or if we wanted to, we could set it to two right away, but we don't have to because we're initializing it in our program. So now that we have that as two, we can go into edit, brings us back to the program, and this reinitializes it as zero. And then we're going to come back down to the loops, and let's do on the outermost loop because we want to do the encompassing of the columns and rows. So we're going to go ECDM, insert, one line, and this is going to be my for loop for my Z offset. So we're going to go four and register number five. And this is going to go from one to constant of two. So now we have a third offset. So now I'm going to go down, so this is my first for loop, and inside my first for loop, we have our column loop, and then we also have our row. So this is going to be our row for loop all the way to the point where we have the end for, and now we have our home position, X and Y, and then we have our end for. So that's for our drop off of rows. This is setting up for our column. This is our end for for our column. And now we need to reset up everything so that we can go in the Z direction. So we're going to insert. And I'm going to insert maybe like 10 lines just to make sure I have enough lines. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to use position register number four. And we're going to set up the one, two, and also three components of that. So we're going to go registers equal to position register IJ, position register number four, and we're going to set the X component back to a constant zero, just like we did up here. Then we are going to do new instruction, registers equal to position register IJ, and we're going to use position register number four, and the Y component, and we're going to set the Y component back to zero as well. Then we're going to go new instruction, registers. We're going to add now to our Z component. So we're going to go position register IJ for the Z component, which is number three. And then we're going to take the original position register number four Z component, and we're going to add 200 to that. And let's add a heading. set up for Z offset, and then we go down here, and we're going to do our end for new instruction over end for, and let's arrow down. This is where we're going to have our wait command still, so I'm going to delete some of these lines so that we have this nice and clean. There we go, and let's try this out. Let's go up to run cycle. Again, we didn't set up the time yet, so you'll see the warp is kind of off.
So that's our final program. And now everything is set up. And basically all you have to do if you want to go any further is just make sure that you have the array correct and then just change the number of Z offsets you're going to have. And basically this is palletization at its finest. Now you can have multiple robots. You could say you could put down six different boxes and then you can have maybe some cardboard and then six boxes and then cardboard. You can have multiple robots working together but basically this is the exact same coding as anything else just utilizing the for loops and make sure that the offsets are correct